So I want a life of misery and conflict because it's the only way you can learn something. And you can sit at school all your life, which is cool to do for some years, but then you got to take that knowledge and go out. And so you have to kind of take what you know and then go out into what Mark Twain called the territory and kind of break your nose on it and, and get, get some stories, get some, get some knowledge. And, uh, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you a funny most of the time. That's what I say. And so I always try and read books I can't understand and go on trips to see new places and I go on trips that are going to be utterly miserable because I think it's good for me. Misery and conflict is what I need. It's what I deserve. It's somehow good for me. It's, it's the ultimate vitamin. And so a few months ago, I was in Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm online, and I look at my little calendar on my laptop, and, and I see I have 10 days free at the end of February. And I go, oh, February is free. 10 days of February, free. Free. Downtime. Bad. Leads to introspection. Bad. I must do something up in this time what could I do to completely mangle myself and I don't know why my brain hates me so and this bolt of inspiration at me ah, what are you saying to me you're gonna go on the Trans-Siberian Express alone from Moscow to Vladivostok I am you are look it up and so I type into Google Trans-Siberian Express BAM it opens up like 20 different websites where you can get ticket information it leaves every Tuesday out of Moscow straight to Vladivostok the longest train ride known to man I'm like oh my god it's gonna be great book it and so I paste the address into a letter and I send it to my long-suffering travel agent Gina you know, dear Gina it's the psycho go to this website I have these days for you in February book me a one-way ticket from Moscow to Vladivostok alone on the Trans-Siberian Express and two days later I'm in Dublin I think and she writes me back she goes you you nut it's booked you're going it's like minus 40 degrees out there I'm like make it minus 50 make it minus 60 I'm like, come on want misery she goes, you're gonna get it. And so I get back from Europe, I drop my bag, I repack my bag, I 180, I go right back out uh, to Los Angeles International Airport, and I go LA, Frankfurt, Germany, Moscow, Russia, and I, it's my fifth trip into Russia, and I overnight at the hotel, and I go from the hotel to the main station in Moscow, many of you have been there, it's huge, and everything is in Cyrillic, and I have no, no common sense, I have zero practical knowledge, so I'm standing there like, almost in tears, because I don't know where to go. I'm like, I want to go on a train. <laughs> I'm the singer, man. And I see one sign. Thankfully, I see the sign that says, tourist, with an arrow. I'm like, that would be me. And so I go, and I find a man in a glass box. I go, like, yes. I go, hi, sir, do you speak English? Yes. I go, hey, man, I I'm trying to get to the Trans-Siberian Express, but I can't read anything. He said, you'll never find it on your own. I said, that's great. He goes, I'll take you. And he shut down his little box and he took me. And we walked out of the station into the snow down a path. And the Trans-Siberian Express lives on the second to last platform. And it's a filthy green train. And he looks at my ticket. He goes, you're in train car number seven. Go that way. Have a nice trip. I'm like, thanks. And he took off. And I walk up to train car number seven. And there's a woman standing in front of it in multiple coats with half a moose for a hat, <laughs> piercing blue eyes and filthy brown teeth. And I go, how do you do, ma'am? I believe I'm in this train car. And I give her the ticket. Takes it. Uh! I'm like, right. So I, she just grabs me, chucks me at the train. And I nearly face plant on the metal stairs. And I walk up. And she's shoving me from behind. I'm like, okay, I got it. I got it. I get up the stairs. And so we get to my room. I know it's my cubicle because she stops me by the back of my coat. And she produces from her coat pocket this triangular chunk of octagonal metal. It's like this uh, triangle in her hand with this chunk of octagonal metal, like a bolt going through her fist. So she's like, nurse ratchet. <laughs> like, get in, stupid boy. I'm like, right. So I <laughs> locks me in and goes storming down the hallway. So I immediately dub her the angry woman of the people's hallway. And I can get out from inside, but that she locked me in was really intense. And so I realized very quickly, I'm spending a week with this woman. We have not left the station. I have pissed her off already. So the trip does not bode well. You know, I, I've, I've made the lady mad by just my mere presence. I, I do that to people. Now, my four previous trips to Russia, I've had horrible food experiences where I, I ate, I didn't like it, it didn't like me. And I know there's good food in Russia, I just haven't found it yet. I have bad luck with a lot of stuff. And so this time around, I sought to circumvent the bad food experience by bringing my own. And so I went to the same supermarket I always go to. It's like this kind of health food store place. You all have it out here, that place, Trader Joe's, nice place. And so anyway, there's one in LA down the street from me. So I go in and I go down aisles. 
of Trader Joe's I've never been through in my life. I've been going to this store for like 20 some years. I always go for there, I'd get two of those, one of those, and then I cash out and go. This time around, I'd go into different aisles to see what, what's going on in these other aisles. And I see this food, and I go, God, this is awful. Look at it, dried apricots. Get one of those. <laughs> dried pears. Look at them. Put it in. Warm hippie tea. Ginseng, dirt, and love. Zero calories, zero everything. No, nothing, no vibes were harmed making this tea. Add boiling water and drink it. Get five of those. Basically, I bought all this food. I figured it, it looked but three days in, it'll be manna from heaven, and it'll make the trip even better. And so this is the kind of food you buy if you're trying to impress the PC girl, the, the nice hippie girl. And so you buy this food, and you throw it conspicuously all over your kitchen. And she comes in, and you're like, oh my god, you like these apricots? Oh yeah, I, you know, eat them by the bag. You know, I, this, I, you know, I like by the fistful. Oh, you like dried, you like dried pears? Oh. Yeah, love them. Oh my God, you like this kind of tea? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, no, no vibes were harm making. I know, no vibes were harm making this tea. <laughs> Are you a vegan? Um, don't laugh. Um, yes, I am a vegan. <laughs> you are? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a vegan. I, you're not going to laugh, right? No, no, I'm a vegan. Really? Yeah. Now, what kind of vegan are you? Are you like a born-again vegan? Or uh, did you use vegetarianism as a gateway to become a vegan? I mean, what led you to be a vegan? Okay, you're, you're not going to laugh, right? No, no. Well, um, I found out one day, I just, it occurred to me, it was like this epiphany I, I had, Jasmine, uh, that <laughs> I'm eating fish, you know, which I didn't consider meat. And then one day, I looked down at the fish, and the fish had an eye. And that means it has a soul. And, oh, I don't know if it does, but I don't want to take the chance on eating anything that has a soul. And that's why I'm a vegan. <gasps> that is so sweet. <sighs> yeah. So I bought all this really crappy food I didn't want, and I just felt it by weight. I go, yep, this would feed a man for a week. And so I get out into the territory, and I spread it all out, and I inventory it and divide it into seven. And I realize I've provided myself with seven large-ish snacks, and by day three, I'm going to be out of food. I did bring uh, seven two-liter bottles of water in my backpack, so I got the water handled. But you never want to bring seven two-liter bottles of water in your backpack when you go to the Frankfurt airport, because you know that one flight to the next is like, 17 kilometers, where they give you that estimation of your time. If you go to run, yes, if you run very fast, you make it in 27 minutes, yes. If you go to normal jogging pace, you make it in 35 to 41 minutes. And the, the nice lady from Lufthansa in the running outfit will pace with you for the first kilometer. So you need to get your legs higher, yes, to get the legs higher. So do you see the old lady ahead of you? Concentrate on the objective, so you want to get the legs, so if you want to make the flight, you must run! <clears throat> and so I was like, Tor hired all dragging Contiki across the desert with this fucking water. So anyway, I lay it all out and I realize I've woefully underprepared myself for a week in Siberia. The train takes off on time and we go hurtling into the night and I can't sleep because I'm so excited at the idea that I'm on the Trans-Siberian Express alone going into Siberia. I can't wait. And the train goes back and forth like this. You're kind of knocked around. You're not going to sleep anyway. And every once in a while we stop and we'll stop for like 15 minutes in the middle of nowhere. And I hear this clanging sound outside, this metallic metallic sound, tang, tang, I'm like, what is that? And it happens like every few hours. And I, I vow to find out the origin of that sound when the sun comes up. And so hours later, the sun comes up and they make a stop. And I see people out on the platform, which means I can get out on the platform and I want to go into Siberia to get my first double lung full of freezing Siberian air. And so I've got shoes and socks on, pants, underwear, shirt, two thermal. I can get out on the platform and I want to go into Siberia to get my first double lung full of freezing Siberian air. And so I've got shoes and socks on, pants, underwear, shirt, two thermal shirts and a coat and I jump out onto the frozen platform and inhale. And my lungs go, we're now porcelain, we'll break, we'll break. 
for why? Why are you doing this to us? Why do you hate us so? Why do you hate us so? And the cold is incredible. The cold does not give a f what you are wearing. The cold will kill you right now. And the cold goes through my van sneakers, up the marrow of my leg bones, and, and, and I hear the clanging sound, like, the clanging sound, the clanging sound, what is it? So I'm a very curious person. I see ahead of me the, the angry woman of the people's hallway, it's like four cars up. I see massive clouds of steam coming from her mouth, and she's laboring at something, and I walk over to see what she's laboring at, and she's, she's hacking away at something. The, the people's train car has the people's toilet at the end of it. The people's toilet is a very primitive affair. You, you utilize it, you flush the toilet, uh, human waste, paper products, and water goes spiraling down a hole through an exit tube into Siberia. <laughs> Minus degrees, below zero, the train is going at a high rate of speed, there's wind chill factor, a thing is moving at a slow rate of speed in a cold temperature, it sticks. <laughs> ping, ping, every single car. And that's the clanging sound. And I get back to my car, I'm just kind of lurking outside, my body shrinking from pain of the cold. And she gets up to the, the people's toilet down the hall from where I'm living, and she gives me a look like... And she comes up after she finishes the whole train and points the hatchet at my face and goes, like, get on the train. I'm like, and I get on the train and we take off. And hours later, she comes busting into my room. And she was like, ah! 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 Like, she's going to feed me. I said, ma'am, I don't want any food, but thank you so much. Ah! and she's not taking no for an answer. So we haggle a little, and I think I have ordered fish. And, you know, she, and for the first time, she smiles. And you're like, ah! I'm like, da! She goes, da, da, ah, yeah! And she leaves, and then for the first time, she smiles at me in like 20 hours. And why did I say yes to the meal I did not want? Because I didn't want to be too cool for school. I wanted to say yes to the Trans-Siberian Express, yes to the angry one of the people's hallway, and yes to her cooking, because I wanted to get a good boy out of this lady. I want her to like me. And so she reappears about an hour later with the food. And she goes, rip it into my room. I went, oh, it's here. And she puts down the saran wrap, uh, wrapped plate on my table, a knife and a fork and a napkin, a bottle of mineral water and an orange and two pieces of black bread wrapped in cellophane. She leaves and locks the door, goes pounding down the hallway. I unwrap the food and inhale the vapor that comes from it. <laughs> Diabolical. Just <laughs> awful. And all of you come factory installed with that software that will not allow you to swallow bad food. You eat the you know, mouthful of bad shellfish, choo choo choo. <laughs> the software kicks in and goes, do not, do not swallow that. And you find yourself like in mixed company at the cool dinner trying to impress you know, your, you know, your girlfriend's parents or something. You're like, choo choo choo. Because if you put it back on the plate, everyone freaks out. But you can't hide it. Do you have something in your mouth? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Is the food not good? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The food is good. The food is real good. I'm bad. My palate is double stone age. Um, I'm not equipped to fully appreciate the, the, the eclectic, epicurean wonder of your food, this cornucopia of exotic trash. I, I'm ignorant, so, so I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go, and you're going to leave me again. So, I love you, and I love you, because I'm an asshole. Hey, me, an awful, awful mouth. Hello, go back right. And you live to eat another day. Everyone else dies, of course. And so I put the first forkful of this awful food into my mouth, and my, my body goes, please don't! And I go like, and I utilize manual override. That's like, I'm eating this whole meal. Because once I get set on the objective, I must realize it. And so I go, God! Oh, God! I eat all the food. And a few hours later, I'm now bored. I'm officially bored of my laptop, bored of my books, and bored of my mind. I'm going to go walk around the people's hallway. And so I leave my little cubicle. And there's nothing to do in the people's hallway. There's a little, you know, bit of carpet, windows, and other identical sliding metal doors. I'm looking up and down. There's nothing to do. So I put my elbow on the metal rail, and I'm looking out into Siberia. There's nothing going on. The lights are off in Siberia. There's just completely dark. And around 10.25, PM, the voice came to visit me. And the voice has come to visit all of you. Henry, is that the voice indeed? <laughs> oh, 
Hey, the voice, what's happening? Henry, it doesn't matter what's happening with me. What's important is what's happening with you. Oh, yeah. Henry, do you remember the last time I visited you? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 two or three years ago, I went from Melbourne, Australia to Bangkok, Thailand, and I stood in that airport where you always like, have to stand for like two hours and 30 minutes really still, because the air is really thick, so you have to stand real still. Well, the voice, I stood real still, but yet I failed, and I was thrown unceremoniously into a freezing metal capsule owned by Lufthansa and shot across the earth, and I landed in Frankfurt, Germany, stood around the Frankfurt airport for a couple of hours, and then got into another identical but s somewhat smaller uh, Lufthansa rocket and I landed in Gothenburg, Sweden, I think, on the night off, and I sat in a small room with poor light trying to read the British Financial Times uh, on my little tiny bed, and around uh, midnight or so, you spoke to me. Very good memory, Henry. Do you remember what I said to you on that night? Uh, well, not to try and quote you, The Voice, but basically, you, you kind of said, Hello, Henry, tis I, The Voice. You have less than 30 seconds to put that newspaper down and dive to the toilet where you will vomit with more convulsive fury than you thought humanly possible. And Henry, what was the outcome of my pronouncement? The voice, I threw the newspaper down and dove across my little room to the toilet and I vomited with such incredible force that actually I was knocked backwards from the bowl, just like from the, the, the outflow. And I knocked my head on the bathroom door, and I think I knocked myself out for like a few seconds. Eleven and a half, Henry. We watched from above and laughed heartily. Oh, okay. Henry, I'm here in Siberia again to visit you, to let you know that you have less than 30 seconds to run. Thanks, the voice. Not at all. Poof, and the voice is gone. I go hurtling down the hallway. I try the door of the people's toilet. Thankfully, it's vacant. I open the door. I close the door. I lock it behind me and look down at the toilet. Now, we use the toilet every day, but we don't consider the toilet until we're about to vomit into it. So it's like you've never seen a toilet before, or you haven't seen one since you vomited into it the last time. And so I flushed the contents away and went back to my little cubicle and basically shaked and baked the rest of the night and denied the woman the next six times she tried to bring me food, which enraged her. So we get to Vladivostok. She unceremoniously kicks me off the train. I take a taxi from the train to the airport. Three and a half hours later, I'm on an airplane going from Vladivostok back to Moscow, nine and a half hours on the, on the plane, I get out of the airplane, I go to the same hotel I went to a week before, I slept for five hours, went back to the airport and go Moscow, Frankfurt, Los Angeles, uh, into a taxi cab, back to my utilitarian hovel I live in alone, and I put my bag down and realized that I had just traversed uh, all of Siberia alone on the Trans-Siberian Express on the whim of an idea. And the only story I was going to be able to bring to the stage was going to concern deja vu and vomit. And I was going to have to apologize to unsuspecting people all over the world. So, <coughs> sorry.